Hi, I'm Jessica, and today I'll be talking about my senior project investigating categorization in North American river otters. This project was done in collaboration with the RIT Comparative Cognition and Perception Lab and the Seneca Park Zoo. So first, there's a few reasons why we do this research. One is to contribute to conservation efforts. River otters nearly disappeared from Western New York by the 1960s due to things like water pollution, trapping, wetlands disappearing, and other activities which negatively impacted their habitats and threatened the otters. Thankfully, in the 1990s, efforts were made to reintroduce otters to our area. However, many of these issues otters faced in the past are still present today. The more we know about the cognition and perception of the otters, the better that we'll be able to help them in the future. Another reason we do this research is to benefit the otters in zoos and aquariums. Enrichment is very important to these animals in human care, so if we know more about their cognitive and perceptual abilities, then we can design better enrichment devices that foster healthy behavior. Also, information gained about vision in otters can be used during their health assessments. So this project focused on categorization, which is the process where objects are mentally grouped together based on defining features. This could be useful to help animals identify food predators and place new objects in these groups so that they know how to react to them properly. Categorization has been studied in a wide variety of animals such as dogs, rats, goats, birds, fish, but not in North American river otters. We do know that river otters are capable of discriminating between geometric shapes, such as triangles and circles. So we thought that the otters would be a good candidate for studying categorization. So in this study, our two subjects were Heather and Sailor, who were 16 and 12 years old at the start of the study about a year ago. Um, both otters resided resided at the Seneca Park Zoo here in Rochester. So for Heather, the setup was to have the zoo trainer outside with the otter standing near a tree stump. At this time, the experimenter and recorder that are inside would get set up with the stimuli and let the trainer know when they were ready to start a trial. The trainer would then tell Heather to jump onto the stump and then would point to the window where the stimuli were and say target. Heather would then jump into the water and swim towards the stimuli. She would go up to the glass and use her nose to touch right in front of one of the stimuli to make her choice. The experimenter would be watching and then tell the trainer if Heather chose correct or wrong. If correct, the trainer would throw a piece of fish into the water and then cue Heather to return to land. If wrong, the trainer would just cue Heather to return to land only positive reinforcement was used in this study. The recorder would make a note of the otter's choice and the experimenter would place the new stimuli up for the next trial. So here is a short video showing you what a trial looks like for Heather. And so you see that Heather chose correctly for that trial and there she is eating her food reward. So we had a different experimental setup for Sailor because he had to be tested in protected contact. This means there had to be a mesh barrier in between the zookeeper and the otter. They can't be right next to each other like you just saw was the case in Heather's setup. So for Sailor, there were multiple pens connected by gates. Sailor starts in the ITI position, which stands for intertrial interval, and um, the trainer would cue the otter to the experimental area where the stimuli were once, um, again, the trainer set everything up. Sailor would approach the stimuli and stand on his hind paws and touch one of the stimuli with his nose to make his choice. The recorder would call out if the choice was correct or wrong, if correct, the otter would run back to the ITI position and get a clicker and then food once he reached the trainer. If wrong, Sailor would just go back to the ITI position and wait for the next trial without a reward. Like with Heather, only positive reinforcement was used for Sailor as well. So here's a video showing what a trial looks like for Sailor. 
Um, it's a little bit difficult to see sometimes through the different layers of mesh, so just look closely for the otter. And Sailor chose correctly. So you see the trainer feeding Sailor some fish through the mesh right there. And um, you might have been able to hear the clicks that told him food was coming. So in that video, you might have noticed some of the stimuli. And here is the full array that we used in the first experiment. Um, we started with the first pair of training stimuli that were just a circle and a triangle. Heather was assigned the circle as her S plus which means that she gets a food reward for that stimulus and the sailor was assigned the triangle as his S plus. The otters were familiar with these shapes from previous experiments and had very good performance during training at 82.8% accuracy for Heather and 80.9% accuracy for sailor. So from these two shapes, we created a full array of test stimuli by modifying the training stimuli in different ways. So for example, we stretched the triangle and circle to make the vertical and horizontal triangles and ovals. We tilted those shapes. We added lines to the circle to make a hexagon and an octagon. Um, we rounded the sides of the triangle as well as rounded the corners of the triangle. And so with these stimuli, we wanted to know if Heather and Sailor could still recognize these shapes as belonging to their original categories of circle and triangle. And we found that both Heather and Sailor were successful in categorizing the whole array of test probes. You can see that for both otters, there was not a significant difference in their performance with the training stimuli, which is the blue bar, versus their performance with the test stimuli, which is the striped bar. Um, they did just as well at categorizing their training circle and triangles, as well as the modified circles and triangles. Heather did have overall better performance than Sailor, but both otters performed above chance, and so they were both successful in categorizing the 2D geometric shapes. So from there, we wanted to see if the otters could categorize more complex shapes um, in the circle and triangle category, which brings us to experiment two. Sailor was the only otter to participate in this experiment because sadly Heather did pass away from age-related ailments. So in experiment two, we used the trained stimuli that we used in experiment one, which Sailor continued to show good performance at with 75.4% mean accuracy. However, the test stimuli were 2D drawings of real world objects that you see below. These stimuli are a bit more difficult, and we wanted to see if Sailor would still be able to understand that, for example, a tent is more triangular than a baseball, and then properly categorize those stimuli. And what we found was that Sailor was not able to categorize those line drawings, but he did maintain his discrimination of the training stimuli. So this tells us that Staler still knew he was supposed to go to his triangle and he could still tell the difference between a circle and triangle, but he did not do the same for the test stimuli. He was at exactly 50% accuracy for the test stimuli, which is not above chance performance. It's actually right at chance. Um, so we think Sailor struggled more because there wasn't enough exposure to these novel line drawings before the experiment. So actually we're planning on trying this out again, but with additional training stimuli that are more similar to those test stimuli. And we think Sailor may be able to categorize line drawings um, of these real world objects, but we may have not presented them in the best way to allow him to do so. So from this research, we have learned that two North American river otters are able to categorize 2D geometric shapes into triangle and circle categories. Sailor was not able to categorize the line drawings, but like I said, we are planning to further investigate this with additional training planned um, before rerunning the experiment too. 
So I'd like to acknowledge the Seneca Park Zoo staff, as well as the RIT students who helped to make this research possible. They're listed on screen. Um, the funding agencies that supported this research, and of course the authors, Heather and Sailor. And if you have any questions, feel free to email either me or Dr. DeLong. And if you want to learn more about this type of research, you can head over to our lab website that's listed on screen. And thank you so much for listening to my talk.